There is a screenshot from Star Wars Rebels making its way around social media, and I wanted to give you my input. In 2018, Star Wars Rebels Season 4, Episode 13, A World Between Worlds, was released. At this time, Dave Filoni had probably written Mando Season 1, even though it wouldn't come out for another year, but the concept of the first season with Jon Favreau was already completed, as was the conceptualization of Grogu. While in the background of Sabine Wren's interrogation, we see an inscription, an engraving, of what looks to be a Yoda species with its arms out, and in front of it a being on fire, or surrounded by the Force, and two other people as well. Now at first glance, it looks a lot like Grogu from the Season 3 finale, protecting his family from Gideon and also the fire, although bo is not in this engraving, but the man does look a lot like Mando, and from a certain point of view, the thing on the left-hand side looks like the torso of IG-12. Now, while it's very unlikely they knew the Season 3 ending back in 2018, it is possible they intended this Yoda species to be Grogu. There's always been a big mystery surrounding our little green friend, and it's no coincidence he was born in the same year as Anakin Skywalker. I wonder if he has a greater importance in the Force that we're gonna find out in the Ahsoka show, where all of these Rebel stories resume. Could he have been a manifestation of the Force like Anakin was, created through the Force, and maybe the two are a dyad? Or Grogu was a response to Anakin's creation, which in itself is believed to have been enacted by Plagueis in Shmi's womb? Now, the most logical explanation is that this is Yoda, not Grogu, but as I pointed out on Twitter, it's more likely Dave Filoni was alluding to an infamous picture from the Star Wars Galaxy card game, depicting the Yoda species worshipping their deity. George Lucas hated this, and had that card removed from circulation, so as a light-hearted easter egg and joke, Dave Filoni may have put this in the background as a fun callback, because it's not as overt as that picture. I guess we'll find out soon enough what the true meaning of that engraving is, and if it relates at all to Grogu. Even if it doesn't, it could be something that Dave retcons to be about Grogu for future stories, especially given we know the world between worlds is going to feature heavily in the Ahsoka show. Some very intriguing stuff indeed. Share your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Now, staying on the subject of Grogu and the Yoda species, we have a very interesting tidbit, thanks to the latest High Republic book, Cataclysm. A big shout out to my good buddy Star Wars Santa, who helped with the research for this. In the book, they address the relationship between Yoda and Yaddle, and they seem to be doing everything they can to make it crystal clear Yoda and Yaddle were not an item. They were not romantic in any way, but rather Yaddle saw him as an older mentor. He wasn't a boyfriend or husband, and they were not related. Let me highlight a couple of extracts, where a young Padawan asks her if she knows Yoda personally, and if the two are related. Here we go. Yaddle's image blurred and disappeared. A few seconds later, it reappeared in disorganized static before sharpening in focus. An Arcanian child, slightly taller than Master Yaddle, ambled into the image. She was slight of frame with medium olive skin. Like all Arcanians, she had piercing white eyes and stark white hair, which hung in four braids over her shoulders. Okay, so here's the important bit. She looked at Yaddle expectantly. Is he your brother? Yaddle waved her hand gently. Hush, child. He is not. He is Master Yoda, a great teacher. Her hair was braided in tiny plates over her shoulders. Her pointed green ears bobbed slightly with every footfall, and her large green eyes scanned the scenery. There were shallow lines along her nose and forehead. Her skin was slightly brighter green than Master Yoda's. Ada knew that Master Yaddle was around 200 years old, but Master Yoda was older, the only other of her species Ada knew existed, and he was older by a few hundred years. In a later excerpt, Yaddle says, If you think I'm old, wait until you meet. Never mind, Master Yoda was firmly middle-aged, probably past that for his species, and his wisdom was manifesting in his commentary of late. But she didn't want Kipper to meet him, and immediately spew that Yaddle called him old. So basically, guys, while it is possible Yaddle secretly had a thing for Yoda, I don't think so. They're trying to draw a very clear picture that she was significantly younger than him and didn't see him in a romantic way. So what I will say is that unless they change their mind, Yoda is probably not Grogu's dad, but Yaddle might be his mum. With another secret member of the Yoda species on their home world, I don't know if they're ever going to explore that, ever going to give us answers, but let's wait and see. Alternatively, maybe the Yoda species is created through the Force. Manifestations. 
And so finally, my dear friends, a very interesting interview given by Mary Elizabeth Winstead about the Ahsoka show. She was asked what series fans should watch beforehand, and aside from Star Wars Rebels, she also cites The Bad Batch. Of course, Hero Jula appeared in season one, and Mary is saying the character development of Hero Jula at such a young age in that show was just as important as in Star Wars Rebels. Here at a young age, going up in the air being a pilot, wanting to explore the galaxy, all of that stuff is going to come into play. But is she also hinting that we might see Omega in that show, in live action later in the timeline, when they're both much older than they were in The Bad Batch. The reason I say that is I don't think Jennifer Corbett and Dave Filoni had the two characters meet just for nothing. I do think in the future, maybe in the Ahsoka show, we're gonna see the two of them be very close allies. Omega could be someone very important in the fight against the Remnant, if of course she's a Mandalorian and you're a public rebel, someone like that fighting against the Imperial Remnant, fighting against the Return of Thrawn. Let's see what she said. I'm so bad at remembering, you know, exact episodes mm -hmm. and titles and things like that, but I would say, um, going back to, not even on Rebels, but the Bad Bash, kind of starting with that, I mean, that for me was was so great to get to see her as a child because mm -hmm. anytime as an actor if you can figure out what your character went through as a child it's so instrumental in figuring out kind of who they are as a person so that was was really great for me to kind of get to see that childlike joy in her and, and her desire to kind of be up in the air and, and all of that and then to get to see in Rebels and so many episodes when you get to see her really in her element, mm -hmm. fighting, flying her spaceship, and getting to do what she's been wanting to do since she was such a little girl, and kind of the joy that that brings. Last time we saw Hera, Jason, are we going to get to see her mothering him? You know, I, I think I have to say no comment on that one. So we do know that Jason Sinjula is going to appear in the show. There was a Lego leak saying that he would be in it, so I do think that's going to be an important part. We do see her as Sinjula as a sort of space mum. She mothers the ghost crew, but Jason is, of course, her son, the son of Kanan Jarrus, who's dead, but also Hera Sinjula. And I do think he could play into Skeleton Crew. He could play into some other future stories too. And we do make the assumption he might be force sensitive. And I do think the Ryloth arc of the Bad Batch season one is one of the biggest highlights for me of the entire show. Of course, back then she had the French Rylothian accent. She was known as Ira. And I did do a video back then with my good friend Star Force One on why her accent changed, why it's so important, and why in Star Wars Rebels she goes back to that French accent around her dad. But going back to what she's saying, I do think there's a reason she's mentioned the importance of that Ryloth episode. Not just because it was a life-changing event for her, but as I say, maybe connection with Omega. I don't want to get your hopes up, but I do think if any show could explore that, it's going to be this one, the Ahsoka show. I have said maybe Omega in the Book of Boba Fett season 2, but this is also a very appropriate place for that, and Omega is Dave Filoni's creation. Even though Jennifer Corbett's done most of the Bad Batch since the first episode, she still was created by Dave Filoni, and he has more stories for her in mind. But share your thoughts on everything we spoke about in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and just before I go, I want to quickly advertise my Patreon page. We have a vibrant community where you get tons of perks. You you can see me play some Star Wars themes on guitar, get access to our Discord server, I post regular streams, megasodes, and lots of extra videos, including a recent Star Wars horror story that I wrote, and so much more. Not to mention your name at the end of my videos. Link down below. But thank you so much for watching. May the Force be with you, always.